Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing my November wrap-up and it was easily the weirdest reading month of the year that I've had so far, mainly because I started a new teaching job. So out of the nine books that I read this month, six of them were young adult novels that I had to read for the English class that I started teaching. So young adult is not a genre that I usually go for. These are not books that I would have picked up on my own, so it was a weird experience. Most of them I can't say that I would recommend, but I'm going to go through them really quickly. So these are six young adult books. They're either dystopian novels or coming-of-age tales, and I'm going to go through them in order of my favorite to least favorite. So starting off, this is The Body of Christopher Creed by Carol Plum Ucci, and this is a story about a teenage boy who goes missing, and he was like the weird kid of the small town, and everyone's real thrown off by his disappearance because they don't know if he's dead or if he's alive or what happened. So this book had an intriguing plot and some memorable characters and a very bizarre ending, so I did end up enjoying this one. I also enjoyed All Good Children by Katherine Austin. It started off as a pretty straightforward dystopian story, but I thought that it asked some really relevant questions because in the town that these characters live in, they are starting to give these medical drugs to students to make them behave better in school and at home. So it was kind of touching on some hot issues and what we want good behavior to look like and should you be having fun as a kid or should you be working hard at school to prepare for the future as the future becomes more competitive. So this ended up being a pretty decent book. I also read Like No Other by Una LaMarche. This book is compared to The Fault in Our Stars on the cover, so I did not think I was going to like it. But it ended up being a pretty decent romance story. It's about a girl who grows up in a very traditional Hasidic family and she falls in love with this black boy from down the street and it's a forbidden love story and it could have been a train wreck but I thought it was a very sensitive portrayal of young love, so not as bad as I was expecting. My three least favorite books that I had to read are all dystopian books that are book one in a trilogy or a series, so I can clearly see that that is not a genre that I'm interested in. So one of the books I read was Divergent. Did not get along with that one too well. I had to read Delirium by Lauren Oliver, and this book was about a society that has outlawed love. So you know that our protagonist is, of course, going to fall in love and it's going to be this whole thing. So yeah, you know, it was okay. The writing wasn't the worst, but I just didn't really love it at all. And my least favorite by far was Uglies by Scott Westerfield. Again, not a terrible premise. It's a good message about like valuing inner beauty instead of just external experiences, but like the characters just felt so flat in this book. They did not come to life. And I think even my students who were younger adult readers reading this book couldn't get into this one because I just don't think that there was much engagement going on so this one was a big miss for me. And with the other dystopian series books I actually went on Wikipedia and looked up what was going to happen in the series but for this one I didn't because I just did not care at all. So now we're moving on away from the YA portion of this video and I thought it was funny because I did read one novel this month and that was Son of a Trickster by Eden Robinson and this book, while it's written for adults, it is still from a YA perspective because it is really about the everyday life of this teenage boy and the hardships that he's going through. So I thought that was kind of funny. I had one book to get away from YA and I still chose something about a teenager. But still, this book was recently on the shortlist for the Giller Prize, though it didn't win. Win. and I haven't read any of the other books on the shortlist so I really can't comment on whether it deserved to win or not but I'm glad to see it being recognized because this was a very enjoyable novel and this is about a teenage boy named Jared and for the first 200 pages it's a pretty meandering tale and I wasn't really sure where it was going because it was very much just about his day-to-day -day life. He has very dysfunctional parents. They're separated but they both have their problems so he's dealing with all this family stuff and then he's kind of getting into using drugs and alcohol and he's making friends with the wrong kind of crowd at school so it was just a very realistic portrayal of what being a teenager is like but then this novel really starts kicking it into high gear when the magical realism elements start to come into play where we learn of this trickster character and Jared learns some things about his family that he didn't know 
show and there is a gang of feral otters. So this book gets very exciting for the last 100 pages and it is book one in a trilogy so I am really looking forward to seeing where this is going because this did feel very much like the introduction to this work and I'm excited to see these books go even further into weird fantasy territory. When I first picked up this book, I was looking at it from a teaching perspective and hoping that it might potentially work as a book to bring into some kind of English class because it addresses life from a teenage perspective and the main character is growing up in a First Nations background, so I thought it could be a really engaging novel. And then Eden Robinson drops some very explicit language on like the first page where the boy's mother calls his grandmother a f***ing antisaurus. So it's not gonna work. That kind of killed my dreams. I'll definitely get fired if I teach this. But still, I'm glad I read it just for myself because I did enjoy myself quite a bit reading this book. The last two books that I read this month would fall under nonfiction November. So the first of these books was Seven Fallen Feathers by Tanya Talaga. And this was one of those books that you would categorize as depressing but important. So this is a book about seven First Nations teenagers who left their communities to attend school in Thunder Bay, which is a northern city in Ontario. And the reason that these students do this is because on a lot of reserves up north they don't have a high school. So if you want to finish your high school a lot of students have to be flown down into more southern communities so that they can finish up school. And what this book is about is how the system is failing these students for the most part. And in particular this book deals with seven students who have died while leaving their homes and going to attend school in Thunder Bay. So it's really sad because you're introduced to each of these students, you get to know them as people, and then they all unfortunately end up dying. Really tragic deaths, some of them mysterious. You don't get a lot of answers for what really went on. And part of that we see is there's some really blatant racism going on with the police force in Thunder Bay, where they're not handling these cases with the same kind of care and dignity that they would with other people. So it's a really upsetting book. You know, it's sad reading about these young lives cut short and how the system kind of keeps failing people over and over again. So it's a really sad book, but it's really important if you're not familiar with the stuff that's going on. It's, uh, it's a difficult read, but again, very essential. The other nonfiction book that I read this month was also pretty depressing, but it was more about history than current day issues. And that was Killers of the Flower Moon, The Osage Murders, and The Birth of the FBI by David Gran. So this is a book about a chapter of American history that really isn't talked about very much. And it's essentially about how the Osage Indian Reservation was built on top of a lot of oil. And the members of this tribe were entitled to to their head rights so they were making a lot of money from people who were going in and drilling the soil so some people were saying that they were the richest per capita people on the planet so there was a lot of money floating around this reservation and then all of a sudden people started to mysteriously die and that was the craziest part of this book is there were like over 20 people that were just dropping dead in these really weird ways so people were getting poisoned, houses were getting bombed, people were getting shot in the back of the head, like there was all this weird stuff going on. Basically the local authorities were making like no progress in solving these cases or figuring out what was happening. So that's where this early version of the FBI got involved. So you do get to see the FBI from its early days and the agent that they send to work on this case, Tom White, is like so adorable. I really loved reading about him. He seemed like a stellar dude. But it's a really disturbing case and reading about this stuff is like really shocking and upsetting because for most of the book they're just trying to stop one killer. Like as if there's one person that's responsible for all these deaths and once they get him behind bars it's all going to be over. But the upsetting part of the story is that a lot of people in American society were complicit in these murders. So it's not just the story about one evil person, it's kind of about an evil, greedy society. People who 
were willing to do anything to get their hands on some money and who didn't necessarily value indigenous people or their lives. So it's a pretty dark story in that way, but this is an important chapter of history and the way that the story is told is very engaging. So the chapters end on a lot of cliffhangers, so you just want to keep burning through this book. And even though this is history that happened a hundred years ago, you are still really invested in the story and just wanting to find out what happened. So I thought this was a really great piece of nonfiction. So those are the books that I read this month. I'm still coming to terms with the hard reality that I'm just not reading nearly as much as I used to before I got this job, which is tough, but at least I have the winter break coming up, so I'm hoping to accomplish a lot in those two weeks. But right now I am reading and really enjoying this issue of the Freeman's Literary Journal. This one's called The Future of New Writing. So it's a pretty varied collection of short stories, poetry, and nonfiction by a bunch of authors from around the world, writing in various languages, coming from a lot of different ages reflected in here. This is just a really good journal. I've just enjoyed mostly everything that I've encountered in here so far, and I'm having a hard time putting it down. So I now have so many new authors that I need to read more of their works after reading their pieces in here. So if you haven't checked out the Freeman's journals, I recommend giving them a try because once I finish this, I'm going to be ordering all the back issues because this has been really excellent so far. So let me know if you're reading anything excellent or how your month went and thank you for watching.